What's going on everybody? JR from JR's Cars. It's been a little bit since I've posted a video. Things have been a little bit hectic lately. Um, but I got to get some uh, some things taken care of on the Torrent. Uh, I've been noticing a little bit of noise uh, from the belt drive, especially, you know, if I hit a puddle, the belt will squeak. Uh, but I've been noticing a little bit of pulley noise. So today what we're going to end up doing is replacing the belt and replacing the belt tensioner. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to do this on any GM 3400 engine. All right, so let's get at this here. Um, definitely first thing you're going to need, obviously, is going to be your, um, your belt tensioner, good quality belt. And on this one specifically, you're really going to want to invest in one of these tools. It's just going to make your life a hell of a lot easier because there's zero room to try and get the, uh, the tensioner off. I'll show you on here. If you look in here, this is the tensioner. It sits on the engine like this, right? This is where you would stick that tool in. The problem with it is that it sits so close to the frame of the, or the body of the car that you can't get a regular 3 8 inch ratchet in there. So having something that's low profile like this to get in there would make getting this out a lot easier. So if you're somebody who's wrenching on your own cars, I highly suggest just investing in this. This was like $33, I think, something like that. And it comes with all the specialty uh, bits for any car that's out there. Um, so basically, so instead of boring you with this section here, basically what I did was I took the upper intake tube off um, this is out of here, disconnected the, um, the connector to the mass airflow sensor, removed that, and then I removed the lower air box too. Um, basically, you can see all it is is a 10 millimeter bolt, bolts right in over here, and that gives us access to everything that we need to at this point. <clears throat> so on this engine, you can kind of see here, we're going to have to take that motor mount off, right? So the way that the pulley or the way that the belt is routed, it's routed around everything, but the top goes over the motor mount and the bottom goes under the motor mount. So that motor mount's got to come off. You got two 18 millimeter bolts here, and then you have three uh, 15 millimeter bolts here. So what you have to do is make sure that you have a jack underneath the engine under the oil pan and then i usually put a piece of wood underneath it just to protect the uh, the oil pan itself and then um i have it like tight up against uh, the bottom of the engine so it doesn't go anywhere but we'll take out those 18 millimeter bolts and we'll take out those 15 millimeter bolts and take that engine mount out and this would be a good time to actually take a look and see if that motor mount is still good um, I know I've been getting a little rocking around too, so we're going to inspect that while we have everything apart. We'll get those 18 millimeters out first. All right. And we'll switch over to the 15. And like I said, I already have the jack underneath the car right now. All right, so let's get those now. <clears throat> okay, see the motor starting to shift a little bit, so we're gonna jack it up again. See, now it should be pretty good. It's going to be held in place. You want to take your time with it so that way the engine doesn't drop on you. And there we go. All right, motor mount is out. Now, oh geez. All right, so it looks like we'll be buying a motor mount here too because you could see right here, you can see the cracking the engine mount, you can see all that really, really flexible here. There's cracking in the bottom here, there's cracking in the bottom here, there's cracks up here, a really big split right here. 
So that could be my vibration I have with this engine. Absolutely. Wow, look at how... I'm not even really putting pressure on that, but look at how... Look at that split in the back there. All right. That's going to get replaced too. All right, so here's what I was talking about. Um, let's put this... Let's see. You can see with the tool here, this is what I was talking about, where you would have this really thin, really small thin end here. Um, I'll show you in a second where that hole is um, that we would put this in on the tensioner. Um, but having a tool like this is absolutely going to help you and it's going to make this job easier. You don't have to lift the engine up really far, um, just enough to get it into position to where you can get that tensioner out. <clears throat> and if you look down here, that's where the tensioner is, right? So this right here is going to be your tensioner, right? This is the tensioner down in here. You might be able to see it right about there. That's where you're going to stick that tool. And then the belt is going to come off. And then what we'll do is we'll get this. This is a 16 millimeter bolt. Um, we'll get this one. That's the through bolt that goes into the block. We'll take this out and that whole tensioner will come straight out and then we'll get to the replacement. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the tool here. And like I said, this is what you'll see. Then you're gonna put it in that area down in the bottom here. I'm trying to get that tensioner loose so we can get that belt off. Okay, there you go, the belt's off. Just watch when you let it go because that tensioner's still under tension, still under a pretty good amount of tension. So you don't want to go flinging that back because that could that could cause some problems there. All right, so let's get this belt out of here. All right, so now it's time to get this tensioner out of here. So this is, like I said, a 16 millimeter bolt. At this point, you have more than enough room to get um, to get your ratchet in there. Let's see if we can get that in there real quick. And break this free. That's probably the easiest part of it. Here's the pulley and the, the tensioner. That's all out of there. And here's the bolt that came out. Uh, looks to be in good shape. When I had this... Um, when I had my mechanics, my mechanic stethoscope on it, um, I was hearing a little bit of grinding on the um, on the arm here, and uh, as I'm kind of wiggling it around, I could feel a little bit of looseness. It's not terrible, but I can definitely feel a little bit of a wiggle on it. Although it feels like it does ride pretty smooth. You might not be able to hear that, but there is a little bit of grinding. So what we'll do is we'll grab the new one. New um, replacement is the same as the just the reverse of the um, uh, the the removal. Um, there's a little pin on the back. Let's grab the new one here. Little pin on the back, and that lines up in the um, in the block. And then what you'll do is you'll put your your bolt through it. You'll tighten it back up, and then we'll put the belt back on. Alrighty, so when you're putting your belt back on, you have to make sure that you put it back on the right way, obviously. Um, you have your alternator up here, your tensioner here, there's an idler pulley here, there's an idler pulley here, there's your uh, water pump here, your AC compressors down below, another idler pulley, and your crank pulley down there. So what I'll do is I'll show you, I'm, I'm going to get this on off camera, but I'll show you a quick diagram of how it's um, how it's supposed to go around the um, around all these these items in here to make sure that you have the right flow of everything too. So check that out right now. Okay, one of the things to note on the new tensioner that the old tensioner actually doesn't have is the little markings here. Right? You see these markings? Um, this means it's at full flex. And then this, like, basically it's the, uh, the tension guide for, um, for the stretch of the belt, right? So as you have this in the car and it flexes forward to have tension on the, uh, the um, tensioner here with the belt on, you'll see where the tension level is. So if you're seeing 
you know, this, this is good. This should be a new belt. This is, you know, a belt that's kind of slightly warm. So in this area should be okay. Once you're starting to get between this line here and this line, that's when your belt is stretched too far and the tensioner is really not doing too much. So at that point, you want to make sure that your belt is replaced and you want to always just make sure that you have a good tensioner in there too. Honestly, this was like, like $25, I think, for this, this tensioner. So it's really not that expensive to replace with the belt too. All right, so truth be told, that took longer than it needed to really be. <laughs> so um, I got it all on there. Everything's up and good to go. The problem was is that that bar it's a little bit too long. It's probably about this this much um, too long for uh, for the torrent here. So what I had to do is just put a little bit of a bend in it. Um, and then what I had was instead of having it way up here pushing this way, I had to put it way down here, line it up way down here, and have it just angle in a little bit over here. Uh, you could see where it um, was making contact with the lower the radiator hose here. Um, and then pull it from below and get that belt on. Um, good way to do it is to get all these pulleys all up and ready to go up over the alternator and then just have it to the point where it's just about, like it's gonna be pretty much like right here on the, uh, on the idler pulley here. Um, and then pull this up, uh, pull the tensioner up, get the tension on it, uh, the tension um, onto the, the uh, tensioner here so you can um, get the belt moving and then just push it on there and slide it on and so you could see down there those lines that I was showing you before you're gonna see that there's no stretch on it now so that's what it should look like with a new belt on it and then when it starts going down towards that bottom one that's when it's time to replace your belt so what we're gonna do is put this motor mount back on put everything back in it and give it a fire up so when you put everything back together, um, just make sure that you put your mass airflow sensor uh, connector back together and that you put your, um, your, vacuum, your vacuum tube here back on and that you tighten down this, um, uh, this clamp here because I've been known to do that. Take the uh, upper air box off and leave this, uh, leave this loose here where you could get unmetered air past the uh, mass airflow sensor. So. Let's go ahead and give this thing a start and see what it sounds like. All right, so I hope that helped you out. And if it did, do me a favor, hit that like button, share, and most definitely subscribe to the channel because I do have you know, some more content coming for you and I have a bunch of content already up there for you. So I hope everybody's staying safe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.